How's everyone doing? This is Indiana here with Emptor Audio. Well, today we're checking out the IEMA A08 Pro. This is a rather interesting unit. You really don't see a integrated amplifier, you know, with this type of, you know, uniqueness to it. Uh, there's a few brands out there that really kind of go, you know, crazy with the looks of what they make their different types of amps and DACs look like. Um, this one kind of caught my eye because it's got a little VU meter on it, which is pretty interesting. Also, of course, you got your usual EQs up here on front, the treble, the bass, you know, nothing out of the ordinary here. Um, now, there's no power button. It's going to be, you know, one of the power buttons on the volume control there. So, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary there. Of course, there's no remote. Whenever you get those volume control, you know, power um, on and off things there, you usually don't have remote with those. Um, but this one does have Bluetooth. You got your little Bluetooth antenna on the back here. Um, nothing too out of the ordinary on the back here, your usual speaker connections, you've got an unbalanced input, and then of course you've got a little pre-out if you want to add maybe a subwoofer in there. Um, very easy to do, of course. Um, I'm not really a subwoofer fan too much myself, so I'll probably never end up really using the subwoofer out at all. Um, Depending on which power supply you use this with, it's going to be right around on average about 80 watts. Um, I don't know if I'm a fan or not yet of, you know, being able to use a different power supply to put out more power on these amps. I mean, it's kind of cool. You can always upgrade that later on, but I almost rather just have just kind of give me the best right off the bat kind of thing too, if I think about it that way. But this thing definitely has a ton of power to it. Um, I mean, the power brick on this thing is massive. I mean, it's like, it's like, if you see those Xbox 360 power bricks, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty big. It's like bigger than this unit itself. Um, I said they're almost the same weight too, which is kind of funny as well. Uh, but th this thing, I say listening thoughts on the A08 Pro, um, definitely pretty good. You know, it, it's, I can't really pick anything that I really find as a weakness to it. Um, I did find it was a little bit more difficult to really dial in the treble and the bass um, because I put them to basically just, you know, dials to zero for the most part. And it doesn't sound bad, but it just kind of sounds a little flat to me. And then I kind of usually started putting them both at basically, you know, 12 o'clock all the way upright. And it just kind of felt a little bit off. Usually these are really easy to dial in the EQs, but this one's a bit more difficult than other ones that I've seen. Um, it almost sounded like then it was too much at the 12 o'clock, which is usually a great starting point for most of these EQs. And I kind of put them down a little bit, kind of put them up a little bit. And it took me probably 20 minutes or so just listening to music to really get them dialed in nicely, um, which is kind of unusual for these. These are usually really easy to kind of dial in quickly to what you like to hear, and you're all set and good to go from there. So that's kind of the one downside there to it. Um, but it does sound really, really good. Now, these do go on sale, and if you check out their website, you know, it'll show it as a cheaper price. I think it's like $89.99 bucks on their website, but it's with no power supply. So if you want to buy the power supply with it, it's like another $20, bucks, $30. Bucks. If you want to buy the upgraded power supply, it's like another $20, $30 bucks after that. So, I mean, if you keep a, a selection of these power supplies, you know, ready to go, you can definitely, you know, keep reusing them for different units, and you can save a little bit of money there. So. That's always an option you want to check that out. Um, but you know, pairing this with a solid amp, I've been using the SMSL DO300 amp, or something DAC, not that amp. And this thing just is pretty clean. I've been pretty impressed by it. Um, it does put out a decent amount of heat, I will say. That's not unusual for these amps, just kind of something to be aware of. Um, I'm used to the Class D amps being very, very cool, uh, but the amount of power this thing puts out, yeah, it really does put some heat out. Not like, ow, you're gonna burn your hand, but you know, just a bit, a bit of heat that you might be like, wow, that's, that's a little toasty there. It's kind of one of those things, just be aware of there, of course. Um, one thing I would like to talk about is the backside. Um, is it going to be, you know, cramped and hard to get all the connections in? This one's not too bad. Um, I like how they, you know, they got the um, speaker connections are all just flat here, not like the usual, like the kind of the square where they put them on top of each other and stack them there. Um, then, of course, your unbalanced is going to be, you know, on the other side. Um, then you got your little antenna here. They give you a nice little cover in case you don't want to use it. I don't, I don't really use Bluetooth with these too much anyway, so not really that big of a deal. I mean, I've got Spotify on my computer that I have in my DAC. And I've got Spotify on my phone, so it's not really that much of a difference there. I'd rather use it on my computer. I can run into the nice DAC then, when I'm all set. But if you want to use Bluetooth, that's fine too. That works out pretty good. So if you like the VU meter on this, I will say that is one nice pro to buying this. Um, reading some other Amazon reviews, it seems like everyone does like the sound of it. 
um, but the VU meter can kind of throw you off. Um, now you'll never really use, you know, all the watts of power in an amp like this, unless you're driving just some massive speakers at super loud volumes, you know, you're not really going to use a ton of power. If you're using this for like a desktop setup, of course, you're maybe going to use, you know, just a fraction of a power at a fraction of a watt at most. So don't be concerned by this thing. Only, I think this view mirror actually only goes up to, I think it's like 10 watts. It's not like huge. Yeah. I think it's like. Yeah, only about 10 watts or so there. So it's not like a huge, huge, you know, VU meter. They see something like the Macintosh that just go up to like 300, 500 watts and they're just huge. But when you turn those things on, you know, they often will just stay, you know, just barely getting a little bit of wattage there, not showing too much power at all, unless you're like really, really cranking a larger system. Uh, but for using this at like a desktop audio setup, you know, a nice smaller setup, this is actually a really nice little amp to have. And the only, the only problem here with a lot of these amps is the price point of this amp is extremely competitive. We're right around that, you know, $100 to $150 range. Um, and there's just so many options there to choose from. Um, I mean, you can go on Amazon right now and you're going to find a thousand of them in that price range by like a hundred different brands pretty quickly. Um, but overall build quality of this, the AO8 Pro, I think is great. Um, I, the only thing that kind of bugs me is the volume control a little bit. You are super loud when you get to like here. So there's not a lot of, you know, being able to really dial in your volume too well. Um, you know, by having, you know, got to really move the volume dial a lot, but you get to the volume you want really, really quickly. That might be your thing. It might not be. I like having a little bit more linear upward approach to volume controls where I've got a lot more, like I can really dial it into what my volume wants to be. So that's kind of just your, your kind of your, your choice on that one. But I think it's honestly a pretty great amp for what it is. It's really hard to, you know, argue any downsides to it. I think the only thing with it, it doesn't really have anything that's just like, you know, amazing about it. I think, you know, sound quality wise, it's like a seven out of 10, um, where you could find, you know, eights and nines out there for the same price point as well. Um, but your money is going elsewhere here. Your money is going into the EQ on the front. It's going into the VU meter. And that's where you're kind of taking away from the amp quality there. So it's going to be a little bit of give and take when you get into that price point for this amplifier. It's going to be, what do you want? You know, there's other amps out there, you know, that are going to be all about the sound and nothing else. We're going to find more amps that are going to be a little more about the aesthetics, you know, more, you know, the cool stuff on the front, more customizableness to your sound. So it's going to be, you know, up to you really on that one. But honestly, I can't find much wrong with this unit myself. There's not really like any like, you know, glowing issues with this unit that I can see myself. Um, so I definitely say I definitely would recommend it if this is kind of your cup of tea here, um, basically what you see on the front. And it's a great unit overall, honestly. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the A8 Pro. I think it's definitely pretty neat. So guys, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have one, how much you would think about it so far. And uh, if you're planning on upgrading to one as well, let me know if you have any questions. Happy to answer them. So guys, thanks for watching. Take care and have a great day.